In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what Tailwind CSS is, as well as give you a quick tutorial on how to get started with Tailwind CSS. So let's begin. Before I give you a formal definition of what Tailwind CSS is, I want to show you some code over here. So here I have an index.html file and it links to the style sheet and both of them together implement this design. So the design over here is quite simple. So I have this parent dev container that is a flex box and it has three children devs and each of these children implement this product card over here. Each product card has an image, a title, some description and the buy now button. So this is just traditional HTML and CSS, nothing fancy going on over here. In my styles.css, I have added styles for the body, the container, for the product and for the product title, image, button, and, and some styles for hovering over this button. So how I've approached this particular design is that I've created classes for each of these elements over here and added the relevant styles for them in the CSS file. Now I'm going to try and refactor this style sheet so that I'm not rewriting my styles again and again. So let's start with this border over here. So in the design, I have a couple of different elements the product image, the product card and the button and all three of them have this black border as well as some border radius. So instead of repeating these styles, what if I took them out and created a class of them? So let's say the class is called rounded border and I move the border radius and the border styles inside of this. Now when I develop this website further, I can simply just use the rounded border class instead of rewriting these styles over and over again. Now let's try and identify a couple of other styles that might be repeated as well. So here in the title as well as in the button, I have made the text uppercase. So I'm using this property text transform uppercase at two places. So what if I remove this? So what if I extract it and make a class of its own? Let's call this class uppercase and add the property text transform uppercase inside of it. Now, wherever I have my titles or if I want something else to be uppercase as well, I can simply just include this class and instead of creating a new class and then rewriting a style over there. Similarly, I can do that for padding. So I can create a class for padding where I have added padding 10 pixels. And whenever I create a new card, I can simply just use this padding class over there. So this is basically what Tailwind CSS does. It has a class for basically everything you can imagine. For example, Flex is something that you use quite often in your websites for layouts and stuff. So Tailwind CSS has a class called Flex, which basically just has one property display set to Flex. Similarly, Tailwind CSS also has a class for Grid, which also has one property display set to Grid. Similarly for other properties, let's say you want to do position absolute for an element, there's a class for it in Tailwind CSS. Let's say you want to set the width to 100% of an element, there's a class for it in Tailwind CSS. Now to define what Tailwind CSS is, it's just a collection of a bunch of utility classes. You can simply just use these classes in your HTML to build professional looking websites. Now let me showcase the power of Tailwind CSS with the help of this example. So design that I just showed you over here, I'm going to remove the CSS that I wrote manually and instead for the styles that I wrote manually, I'm going to use the suitable classes provided by Tailwind CSS. Since this is just an example, I'm going to use the CDN to be able to use Tailwind CSS in my static website over here. So you can go to the official documentation of Tailwind and depending on your project, look at the installation steps. To include the CDN, you just need to copy this script and paste it inside of your head. Once that is done, you should be able to use Tailwind inside of your HTML page. Now let's start with the body. So the first thing that I've done over here is set the background of the body to this shade of yellow. Now let me introduce to you Tailwind colors, which is probably one of my most favorite things about Tailwind CSS. So Tailwind CSS provides you with this default color palette, which has all of these colors that you see over here. So for every color, there's a range. It goes from a lighter shade to a darker shade. So for example, for this gray over here, the lightest shade is 50 and the darkest shade is 950. Since I want to use yellow, I'm going to look for the yellow color. Now here, uh, I'm going to use this 100 shade. Another thing about Tailwind CSS is that the classes or all the utility classes that it provides, you don't really need to remember their names. First of all, because you can easily go to the documentation and search for the relevant class name. And secondly, most of these classes are very intuitive and easy to remember. And third, there is a VS Code extension that helps you autocomplete that. You can search for Tailwind CSS inside of your extensions tab. 
and you will be able to see the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense extension and you can install it from there. So let's say you want to set the background color of something. Now the class for that is BG hyphen, the name of the color from the color palette hyphen, the shade, the number of the shade. So here, if I want to use the yellow color and the shade 100, all I have to do is add the class BG yellow 100 to my body tag. Similarly, if you want to set the text color to something, the class to do that is text hyphen color hyphen code or the shade. So let's say I want to do text yellow and let's say I want to do it a darker shade of yellow. So I can, I can do something like text yellow 900. And now all of my text is the darker shade of the yellow from the color palette. Similarly, for border, can you guess what's the class name for that? It's border hyphen color hyphen code. Now let's move on to the padding. So Tailwind CSS provides you with some standard padding classes. These help you remain consistent throughout your design. So let's take a look at the different padding classes provided over here. So this P0 class implements this property padding and sets it to zero pixels. Similarly, there's PX0. Now this class has these following properties. It sets the padding left to zero pixels as well as padding right to zero pixels. So PX here means on the X axis. Similarly, PY0, then there are a couple of other classes here as well. If you just want to set the padding right to zero, there's PR. For bottom padding to be zero, there's PB. For left, it's PL. And for top, it's PT. Similarly, can you guess what are the classes for margin? For margin, it's M0, MT0, MB0, ML0, MX0, MY0. To set display to flex, the class name is flex. And to set justify content to space between, the class name is justify between. Since I've been using Tailwind for quite some time, that's why I remember these classes. But initially, you will have to go to the documentation and look up. So here you can search for border radius. And here are all the classes available for border radius. Similarly, I'm going to do that for this entire style. So it took me a couple of minutes, but now I have completely migrated my styles from CSS to Tailwind CSS. So here now my style sheet is completely empty and all of my styles right now are implemented with the help of Tailwind classes. Now, hopefully now you have an idea about what Tailwind is. It's a bunch of classes. It's a collection of classes that you can simply just plug and play to create really professional looking website. Now, here are a couple of features that I want to highlight about Tailwind CSS. So I want to show you how you can implement pseudo classes like hover or focused in Tailwind. All you have to do is use the prefix hover or use the prefix focus or active, whatever state you want these styles to be applied on. And after doing hover colon, add the class you want to apply on that particular state. So if I want to make the background color BG yellow 300 on hover instead of BG yellow 100, all I have to do is do hover colon BG yellow 300. Let me show you how you can do that for this button over here. So let me change it to a darker shade of pink to do that. All I have to do is hover then BG pink. The initial color is 300 so i'm going to set it to 400 so hover bg pink 400 and now see what happens now on hover the background color of the button automatically changed and i didn't even have to write any css for it similarly you can create some basic animations just with the help of tailwind it provides you with certain utility classes for animations as well so if you search for animations in the documentation you'll be able to see a list of all the classes so here are the examples. So you can do this animate spin animation. You can create this pulse effect. You can create this bounce effect. So let me show you how to do that again with this on this button over here. So let's say I want this button to spin. Now my button is spinning. Another really cool feature of Tailwind CSS is that it lets you create responsive designs without having to write any media queries at all. Let me show you how. So you can use these prefixes similarly how you used the hover prefix. So for smaller screens, all the classes that you want to apply, you can do that using SM colon and the class that you want to apply. 
so tailwind has five predefined breakpoints and these are the values of these breakpoints so if you do md w32 it's going to apply this w32 class on this breakpoint over here which is 768 pixels so it's going to automatically create a media query for you so let's go back to my design over here and i want to make the flex direction of this to a column instead of a row for smaller screens so let's do that so by default i want the flex direction to be a column and for larger screens lg for larger breakpoints so at this lg breakpoint i want the flex row class to be applied instead and there you go i didn't even have to write any media queries at all so if you know css well this video should be probably enough for you to get started with tailwind css you can jump right into the talks and get started with it but if you are looking for a more thorough comprehensive tutorial then you can join my upcoming workshop using the link in the description box below i'll see you in the next video